Hello. What's wrong? Oh, have you never seen a talking glass of water before? Unbelievable. I'm very important, you know, me. Water, yes. You see, you need me. I'm precious. And I'm in big demand and increasingly short supply. I know what you're thinking. Short supply? It never stops raining round here. But it's true. Did you know that 97% of the world's water is salt water found in seas and oceans, so it's totally undrinkable? And from the 3% of the Earth's fresh water, only half a percent is available for drinking too. And get this one. Less than 1% of treated water is actually consumed by people. Most of it goes to lawns, washing machines and down toilets and drains. It's estimated that due to increased demand, two-thirds of the world's population will face water scarcity by 2025. Drink that in! And I don't exist just for humans, you know. Other animals and plants need water to survive too. I need looking after. And you can all do your bit. You can all use me wisely, stop polluting me and help protect nature. And I've got good news. The River Champions at Lowther School have produced a film to let you know what you can do to help me and to help you. It's time to accept the challenge. Run VT, Lau the School River Champions. Yes, it's time to act for Eden's Rivers. Hello. And welcome to the Eden Rivers Trust news channel. And here is Newsflash. Rivers are our lifeblood. We rely on them for clean water, food and having fun and keeping healthy. We use water everywhere, in our homes, schools, offices, on farms and in our factories. But there may be trouble ahead for our rivers. Yes, our rivers and the river creatures that depend on them are under threat. From us. It's true. Rivers are under threat from the way we live and some of the everyday things we do. We asked James and James to find out more about where the water we use comes from. Over to you Jameses. Before we begin we need to think about where water comes from. It's pretty obvious isn't it? Well, yes, but the water has quite a journey before it reaches us and our taps, toilets and washing machines. Water is taken from reservoirs, rivers and aquifers. Most of our water comes from reservoirs. These are artificial lakes which have been made by building a wall called a dam across the valley to collect the water which drains off the surrounding hills. Look at this one for example. This is Horswater Reservoir. Hawes Water supplies 400 million litres of water every day to people living as far away as Manchester. And a growing population means there is a growing demand for water. The water from reservoirs, rivers and aquifers is pumped down huge underground pipes. Some are so big you could drive a car through them to a water treatment works where it is made clean and safe for us to drink. The water moves through lots of different stages, including flocculation, clarification, filtration and chlorination to help hydration across the nation. Sounds like a rat. Basically, it gets cleaned and cleaned and cleaned again. From here, it is pumped through another huge network of pipes all the way to our homes, schools, factories and farms. And then, there it is literally on tap for us, to use in our showers and baths, for flushing our toilets, washing our dirty dishes and cleaning our clothes. Thank you James and James. It's clear that we all need to use water wisely. And it's really easy to use less water at home. We need your help. 
so we have set you some water saving challenges. All you have to do is accept the challenge. Let's do this! River challenge one! Use water wisely. Turn off the tap when you're brushing your teeth. He said, turn off the tap when you're brushing your teeth. Did you know that if you turned the tap off every time you brushed your teeth for a year that you would save 8,760 litres of water? That sounds like a lot of water. It is a lot of water. If you got 250 friends to turn off their taps too, in a year you'd save enough water to fill an Olympic-sized swimming pool. Do you accept the challenge? Yes, I do. River, River challenge, challenge 2. two. Use water wisely. And use the short flush button. If you've got a dual flush toilet, always use the short flush button, as it will only use about 5 litres per flush. Older toilets use a whopping 13 litres per flush. Do you accept the challenge? Yes, I do. River, River challenge, challenge 3. three. Water wisely. Instead of reaching for the garden tap, collect rainwater and reuse water from the home. When you run the hot tap, collect the cold water that comes out before it runs hot. Good plan! Instead of letting the water run away down the plug hole, use it to water the garden or wash the car. Do you accept the challenge? Yes! Yes I do! River Challenge 4 Use water wisely Take your the showers We take clean fresh water for granted but it's a very precious scarce resource that we should all cherish and a growing population means there is a growing demand for water So what are you all waiting for? It's time to knock a few minutes off your showers Do you accept the challenge? Easy! That's how you can use water wisely to help our rivers. Now we need to think about what happens to all the dirty water that we wash and flush down the toilets, sinks and drains. This dirty wastewater travels through pipes into an underground drain outside our homes. Sometimes people wash and flush the wrong things down the drain and this causes blockages. Wet wipes and all the other things we shouldn't flush away can also stick to fats and oils that get washed down the sink, growing and growing and growing into giant sewer monsters called fatbergs. These stinking sewer monsters cause complete blockages. That can mean sewage ends up coming back up the drains and into our homes. <coughs> Raw sewage contains all sorts of baddies and bacteria. And wastewater from farms and factories can contain even more dangerous chemicals. That's why cleaning and treating the dirty water before it goes back into our rivers is really important for the environment. After all, river creatures need clean water to survive. Look at this wastewater treatment works. The sewage is moving through several stages to separate the solids and the liquids. The solids are collected and taken elsewhere to be used as fertilisers. The liquid is then trickled over beds of stones which are full of millions of microorganisms which spend all their lives... Well, how do I explain this? Feeding on our poo. Eventually, this liquid is considered clean enough to be put back into our rivers. That sounds amazing, so what's the problem? Well, some sewage pipes also take rainwater from roof gutters of buildings and some street drains on roads. And sometimes, when it rains, so much water goes down all these drains that the sewage systems just can't cope. When this happens, untreated sewage may be flushed straight into our rivers. Just like a big toilet! Now that is a really big problem for the river creatures and us. Especially if people have flushed things like wet wipes down the loo. No! That sounds horrid. But don't worry, we've got this. Here's another river challenge for you. It's a really easy challenge, but it will make a massive difference in our rivers. 
River Challenge 5. This should be more than a challenge. This should be the law. Only ever. 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 Flush pee, poo, paper down the toilet. Toilet paper, that is. Ever. That means that you should never flush wet wipes, cotton buds, nappies, contact lenses, medicines, dental floss. Because they don't dissolve and cling together to make blockages. Many items end up in our rivers and seas. Once there, they litter our riverbanks and beds and are eaten by the wildlife, polluting our water. Yeah. Do you accept the challenge? Whoa, who knew that only flushing pee, poo and paper makes such a difference? And finally, we've set you two more very simple everyday river challenges. River, river challenge, challenge six. six. Don't drop litter. Did you know litter is dangerous to wildlife? Animals cut themselves on cans and get tangled up in plastics. And plastics are really dangerous in the environment as they break up into tiny pieces called microplastics. Did you know microplastics are found all over the world and inside the bodies of fish, mammals and even humans? And scientists think it takes 500 years for a plastic bottle to degrade. So do your bit to keep our parks, green spaces and rivers clean and safe for everyone. And if you can't keep hold of it, always use the bin. Can, can you smash, smash this, this challenge? challenge? Yes, we can. River, River Challenge, challenge seven. 7. It's time to ditch the plastic bottles and use reusable ones instead. Did you know that in this country we get through 13 billion plastic bottles every year? What does 13 billion even look like? Well, that's so many bottles that if you laid them all end to end, that you would reach the moon and back four times. What, what a, a waste. waste. And it's way cheaper to drink the water that comes out of our taps anyway. Do you accept the challenge? Yeah, yeah we, we do. do. The fact is, we could keep going on and on all day with more and more river challenges. But our film can't be that long, so we've got one final really big river challenge. One, one final, final really, really, really big, big river, river challenge. challenge! Think. Just think. Yes, think. Every time you use water, Think and ask yourself, what can I do differently to use water wisely and help to protect nature? And then challenge yourself to do it. So there we have it. It's time to rise to our river challenges, to use water wisely, to protect nature and to pour some much needed love back into our rivers. There's not a moment to lose. Goodbye. Bye.